The BDS is a moral movement that cannot be stopped by Israel because it's, the motivation is moral, the motivation is, is ideological of people who want to send a clear message to Israel. In the last 70 years, have oppressed the Palestinian That's people. That's exactly the point. What Ilan is telling the you people, the, the Palestinian is against, people. Thank you. The BDS is against the existence of the state of Israel. Wow. That's why I told you, don't open it up. This is exactly what the BDS is saying. באופן אולי מעט מפתיע, הרוחות צערו בכנס בנושא פתרון שתי המדינות והחלופות לפתרון זה, שנערך בנווה שלום עבור קהל של פיזיקאים מכל העולם. Meron said that the Oslo agreement was about building a Palestinian state. No, he then corrected himself. He said, no, it didn't, it didn't include reference to that in the, in the agreement. This is totally untrue. This was the perception of the left in Israel, that this is the purpose of the Oslo agreement. But Rabin, who was the prime minister at the time, in his last appearance before the Knesset, he explained very clearly what he had in mind when he signed the Oslo agreement. He spoke about uh, some sort of an autonomy for the Palestinians, not about the state. I was uh, personally involved in much of the talks uh, that led up to Oslo um, as part of the Palestinian team, negotiating team, and I can tell you, assure you, that all of us on the Palestinian side were committed to a two-state solution with everything that implied, with the recognition of Israel's right to exist. With the, that came the demand for the recognition of Israel as a Jewish state, I may remind you, came later in time. At the beginning, all we were asked to do was to recognize the right of Israel to exist, and we did. There was no problem. Anyway, and no, no, much, no. I'm not discussing. No, just, uh, no, I did not come into your strategic sorry, discussion, no, no. so I'm sorry. Uh, okay, I'll forgive you, I think. I've forgiven a lot. <laughs> Uh, the one state alternative is actually the end of or of the understanding of the Zionist dream as we understand it. By the way, if I was a Palestinian, uh, I would go for a one state solution. Israel will disappear in a few years. It, nothing will remain. Uh, it will be a binational state and soon it will be a one national state and it won't be a Jewish state. One of the best means from a pragmatic point of view for a settler colonialist state to survive is to offer partition, for instance. If you don't have the capacity to control all the coveted land, if you insist of also being a democratic settler colonial state, namely you want really to show that the majority determines the policy, you have to make sure that the natives are always a minority within the electorate. But it's very clear that 1967 created both an opportunity and a conundrum. To the settlers. From an Israeli consensual perception, the two-state solution is a tactical solution to the problem of how to have the land without having the people. Now in the EU we have independent states and here we are talking about Israel and Palestine but there is freedom of movement and freedom of residence for all. A German can live in France without asking any permission and vice versa. We think that such an idea, creating an Israeli-Palestinian confederation, a strong confederation that will ensure the rights of all Israelis and Palestinians all over the land, and freedom of movement, freedom of residence, I think this will be a basis for reconciliation. It will be a basis for a new language of hope.